Hey, Hickok 45 here. Is that a gorgeous sight or what? A mountain of 45 ACP. <laughs> 1,000 rounds in total. Uh, donated to the cause by AmmoForSale.com and we are certainly appreciative. That is a lot of 230 grain slugs, 45 ACP. We just could not resist emptying it out of the boxes and slinging some of it. I mean, there has to be a reason to shoot a 45 ACP today. There just has to be, like we would need to dig to think of a reason, right? Well, we pulled out a couple of 45 ACPs, namely Glock 21 Gen 4. Nice, nice piece of hardware and polymer, as well as an XDM 5.25. You've seen both of those guns in action, and they are really fine shooters. I, I uh, really enjoy both of those. But, you know... The more we thought about it, uh, it is night, or the year 2011. Just felt like John Browning would not forgive us if we dug into that pile of ammo with anything other than his little creation. So that's what we're going to try. And you'll notice I'm uh, actually packing it in the tanker holster I carried my 1911 in when I was in World War II. So uh, let's take a couple of shots with it. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Let's see if I can find some more ammo. Hey, I just happened to find some. Oh, that will work. Thank you, John Browning. We love you. I have to love John Browning because I get uh, hammer bite every time I fire almost one of these old original 1911s, but that's okay. I don't mind. That's why I have the band-aids on there. What a piece of hardware. Yes, 2011. We would be remiss if we did not bring out one of John Browning's creations on this fine day with this huge pile of 45 ACP. Somehow I just think he would know if we had this many rounds and we were out here plinking around with a Glock or an XDM as fine a firearm as they are I just kind of think he'd know and not feel good about that so uh, let's just shoot the old 1911 uh, replica 1918 to be specific and uh, you've seen it in action it's a piece of hardware that I really really enjoy it is the original configuration and this really is a kind of a chapter two uh, shoots so we're not going to talk a lot but I wanted to explain my, my band-aids here. No, Gunner didn't bite me. Uh, I just, uh, I thought, oh, I'll save myself a little grief and uh, and just put something on here. It doesn't help a lot, to tell you the truth. I get a little hammer bite. That's just the way it is. Uh, with the original 1911, you know, in around 1924, I think it was, they extended the beaver tail just a little bit, and that took care of that. So, but when you get the original ones, and I love the, the flat uh, mainspring housing on the originals and the long trigger, all the other things I just love. It feels, it fits like a glove, but you do get a little hammer bite. Of course, a different hammer would take care of that. It, it really would. That's all you need to do. But, you know, who could do that? You're going know, to put a commander hammer on an original, you know, configuration. I can't do that. You know, if I don't want hammer bite, I've got five or six others I can shoot. But, uh, this is it's nice. Uh, so, again... Yeah, this is the holster I carried. It, it was nice because when I was in the tank, because I had to really, you know, kind of coil myself up being 6'8", and I, I was able to keep my, uh, my trusty 1911 right here handy. So, actually, uh, no one fell for that probably, but uh, this is, uh, I just bought this from uh, Diamond D Custom. I saw it on their website and uh, thought, that is cool. Again, in 2011, the year we are celebrating John Browning's creation, I thought that's just something I need for this gun, you know. And who knows, I might buy a tank sometime. Remember, I think I mentioned the Sherman tank that I might review at some point. So now we're, we're set up for that. So we're going to take some shots. Uh, again, uh, appreciate Ammo for Sale uh, sending that our way. We, uh, we uh, don't do info marshals, but boy, we sure appreciate when people uh, contribute something that we really like and that we use a lot of like firearms and ammo and all that good stuff One thing I wanted to mention too, you know, we, we finally broke down 
you know, I've been bringing out my hodgepodge of magazines out here, and uh, which is really not good, I guess. I've gone through a lot of T&E guns, 1911s and things, with just whatever I could grab in my old stash of 1911 mags. I decided, uh, finally, to buy some more mags and play springs. So what you see here it represents a lot of new uh, Wilson Combat magazines, and as well as some uh, power mags from Chip McCormick. Uh, I've got a mix of both. I think I have more of the uh, Wilson Combat, but I thought I'd try both. They're supposed to be a couple of the very best uh, made. These are some older Colt mags. They've always worked. I've never had any trouble with those, but I, I do need probably to change springs in them. But these are all either new mags or they have brand new springs and followers. The I think it's called the on the uh, Power Mag. It's the, let's see, some of them are there. The Power Mag Plus, I believe it's called. Yeah, the Power Mag Plus. So that's a new mag. Now here's one I've had already, but it's uh, but I put the Power Mag Plus follower and spring in it, so it should be the same. So all these are Power Mag Plus followers, springs, and maybe even the mag, and uh, or uh, Wilson Combat, you know, which have a great reputation as well. So and actually, I have a couple more. We were loading them up, and I noticed the spring seemed to be uh, uh, turning around in there. So I must have uh, done something. Uh, I don't know. I didn't put the spring in backwards. I don't think, but I did something down there. So. I was going to use those, but I got three more, same thing. So we are really set up now and bought new followers and springs for the, the 10 rounders I have. So, uh, and one of those too, as we were loading it, it didn't look right. So I'm going to take those, those three apart just to make sure. I wanted to eliminate that as a, as a possibility, you know, whenever a gun malfunctions. At least I hope so. Of course, some of these we haven't even used. So uh, they're kind of teeny magazines, I guess you could say, although they're, they're all uh, Irish. Okay, so new magazines. Uh, man, we can't blame them on magazines anymore, I don't guess, unless we discover one doesn't work or something. But uh, lots of mags that are brand new, brand new springs, uh, factor ammo, and a, and a beautiful gun. Of course, this is my gun, but malfunctions, it malfunctions. 1911s can do that occasionally, but uh, I don't think this one has, that I recall. Doesn't have much of a sight. You know, these originals, they're, they're just, oh man, they're so special. Uh, but as you can tell, that front sight is not much, and uh, it's it works though. <laughs> I mean, just what I was doing there, I was able to pretty much hit these targets at you know 15, 18 yards, and you know and that's what the gun's designed for. And I try some at long range too, but it is harder to get a good sight picture, no doubt about it. Let's take a few. I've got a couple of mag pouches here I stuck on, I almost forgot to put any on, so we're just going to shoot some now. We've covered all the basics. You know what we've got. I've uh, come clean on all the stories I told you about my tanker holster and everything. Okay. Now I know it's a little <clears throat> bit of an anachronism to put a uh, stainless steel Wilson Combat magazine, you know, in an old uh, <laughs> war horse like that. But that's okay. We want good magazines. Magazines that work. Let's take out some fruit juice here. See if that 45 slug will do that. I can see the front side. Oh, hey, that was pretty nice. <laughs> so was that. I like that. Oh. Sweet, sweet. Sweet, sweet. the hill with this baby. John Browning, I hope you're watching. I'll try not to miss too many times for you. Okay. I think I'm holding a little bit too low. Let's bring that sight up a little bit. That's better. Okay. I want to represent John Browning as well as I can here. Let's 
put some more of these in my pocket. Take a few more shots. Oh yeah, I had one. I didn't realize it. It's nice to have some good magazines that I, I feel confident will work. I do feel confident. Yeah. All right. Save those. I'll take like a ten rounder in my pocket. You never know. I might need that. Let's go hunting with this old war horse. Ah, oh, there's a target for John now. Yeah, guys, sit hard. Let's break out the 10 rounder. <laughs> All right. I love this cartridge. Oh yeah, it will do. That 230 grain slope will knock them around, won't it? Provided you hit it. Minor detail. Okay, we have some more ammo, so let's throw some more. This is a pretty nice gun that uh, John Browning designed. I think it's going to be successful. You know, uh, if you think you want a 1911, uh, you have other guns, you have a Glock, you have an XDM, whatever you have that you carry, that you're really fond of, but you want a 1911 too, just, they're just nice guns. Yeah, I, I think you really want to think about it, if you're planning to have just one, perhaps. If you're not going to carry the thing, uh, it's just going to be a gun you get out every now and then and shoot. You feel like it's really too expensive to shoot a lot anyway. You just would like to have a 1911. There's nothing wrong with this original configuration. Uh, whether it's this gun or it's a Springfield uh, what GI model or a lot of companies make one that's just the, the GI configuration. There's nothing wrong with just buying one of those. You know, you don't have to have all the, the fancy beaver tails. I have one gun that had, well, I guess I have two now with the SR-1911, the Ruger. But uh, I just wanted one that had all that that felt like a glove. But most of mine are are kind of this configuration or the uh, the A1 you know configuration. It's just because it's such a piece of history. Uh, if I just had one 1911, I personally would not want it to be a uh, highly customized version. You know, I, I I would have to have something like this in this ballpark because uh, that's that's the way it was made, and uh, it's just really neat. It doesn't matter if the sight's hard to see. And you know, there's not much of a front sight and not much of a groove back there. That's okay. That's what they carried for decades, and uh, you know, I just enjoy that piece of history. So anyway, just a little editorial rambling there. I'm gonna go back to Mr. Gong. I don't think he got hit enough. That's better. That's better. Okay. Oh, look at here. Got some little targets. <laughs> oh, damn. 
can back. <laughs> Look at that Coke can. Boy, you can tell when you hit it with a 45, can't you? Puts quite a hole in it. Quite a hole. I wonder if it'll knock that bowling pin off. You think 230 grains of lead will? I believe so. Oh yeah, so sweet, so sweet. So what do I have here? I have two magazines left. And that's probably enough. I'm just going to uh, walk down here and play a little bit. Let's pretend we have a combat weapon, which we actually do, don't we? I have my other magazine there. Uh, uh, all right. So even though the sights are hard to see, you know, if you're in fairly close uh, contact with the bad guys, the enemy, it just really doesn't matter too much. Hey, I got another one, all right. This thing does what it's supposed to do. Definitely does. And again, that's the configuration that came out, you know, essentially 1911, 1915. You know, this is the 1918 when they changed the, the finish a little bit. They didn't put, they had, the, because of the war and everything, they, they quit doing the beautiful bluing job on them. And they called this kind of a blackening and uh, just some, some things like that. But the same gun, same gun. Uh, a lot, it's ironically, a lot of people have gone back to a flat mainspring housing and a long trigger like this. This is what I prefer on a gun. That's what the Series 80 1991 model has and one reason I like it so much. It's very similar to this gun except that it has uh, better sights on it and has a little bit more beaver tail so you don't look like a dork wearing a band-aid uh, when you haven't even been dog bitten or snake bitten. You know? So that helped a little bit. Uh, I think I put a piece of duct tape or, or something on there one time and I was shooting and it did a better job so I thought well this two band-aids might help but it's really it's not hurting or anything. And I do get the hammer bite, really every other shot, you know, at least. Would not matter if uh, you decided, oh man, I was gonna carry that gun. That was gonna be my my uh, CCW gun, you know? Now I find out from Hickok it gets I get hammer bite. So what? You know, so what? <laughs> I, mean, I don't think you're gonna notice a hammer bite if uh, you're having to engage some terrorists, so don't worry about that. The gun feels good. It fits a hand like a glove and uh, just a, a, a really nice shooter. And oh man, it, even if it were a poor shooter, it's well, which it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be the piece of history it is, would it? But it is such a piece of history that even if you have a hard time shooting it well, oh man, you got to have some kind of semi original configuration 1911. You know, if, uh, if you call yourself a, a gunny, you know, gun nut, shooting enthusiast, pistol, pistol arrow, whatever, just got to have one. So sweet. Life's really good.